It's more about the technique and finesse than the price tag of your brushes, say it with me y'all. Who cares, makeup is for fun and if anyone tells you otherwise they are chronically online and quite frankly, sad. It's giving pumpkin, it's giving sunset, it's giving artistry. Hi everyone, Justin here, and welcome back to yet another YouTube video. And as a makeup artist, it is my absolute favorite time of year. It is spooky season. October is the month where people put their glam aside and go a bit out of their comfort zone to try something new. But even if you're not a makeup artist, October can kind of be a little bit stressful if you're trying to figure out your Halloween costume or the makeup to go with it. If you're a little lost and have no direction, this video is for you. Albeit today's look is gonna be a bit more on the intermediate side, but I'm gonna take you step by step and I promise you're gonna get this. Trust me, we're not gonna just throw on a black liner and a black lip and call it Halloween. We are gonna show up because it is spooky season. So buckle up, grab your makeup brushes, and let's get started. Last year I did this really fun pumpkin school makeup look inspired by Makeup by Cybel X on Instagram and TikTok. And this look is the perfect intermediate makeup look for those of you who have a base knowledge of makeup but kind of want to amp it up a bit more this year and just have some fun. And trust me, it is a lot easier than it looks and I'm going to take you step by step. The great thing about this look is that it doesn't take too much time, all things considered. Also, if it's your first time doing it and it's rough around the edges, do not worry because this look does not require a lot of insane blending. It's supposed to be grungy and dark, so if you're wearing this on Halloween day, especially if it's dark, no one's going to notice the fine details and it's also perfect for if you're showing up to a Halloween party. Do you guys know I do a lot of this? Let's jump into the makeup. Despite this being a face paint type of makeup, I'm still gonna prep my skin. It might sound like an unnecessary extra step, but trust me, after a long night of wearing some face paint, your skin is gonna thank you that you prepped it. And this is the Bioma Moisturizing Gel Cream. I love the consistency of this. I have oily combination skin and this has niacinamide and green tea and I just love how supple my skin looks after that. And of course, we're gonna prime a little bit with One Size to Secure the Blur Primer. I absolutely love this primer and I think I'm running a bit low. And after a few squeezes, we got the primer out. And this is going to help make sure that we even out any texture and the makeup will grip to our skin. Brow gel is like a quintessential part of my routine. Even if it's just a walk around the city, brows are done. If I do a full glam, brows are done. If I'm doing a makeup look, brows are done. I'm sure my thick brow peeps know this. I've tried so many different types of brow products and literally none of them have the right hold. Literally none of them. But got to be hair gel is like the best product ever. You get the entire tube for a fraction of the price that most makeup brands are charging for those little tubs. This next step is completely optional. I'm gonna add a little bit of foundation. This will help even out my entire skin tone so that the focal point, of course, is the pumpkin skull and not like little blemishes and stuff. Just that we're here for the pumpkin skull, get to the pumpkin skull. This is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear Foundation. I do not know if I said that right, but who cares? This foundation is gorgeous. I've been loving the skin-like finish of my foundation and this one is definitely up there for that. I'm gonna be completely transparent with you guys. It is on the pricier side. Thank you Lancome for gifting me this product, but I fell in love with this foundation for real. I'm gonna take a wild guess and assume most of you guys are makeup lovers because you guys are watching me. This might sound delusional and crazy, but do you guys buy complexion products for different occasions in your life? Because this foundation is perfect for date night or evenings out. <laughs> I know you guys have six foundations, one for your sporty look, one for your everyday, one for glam, like I get the drill. This is what the foundation is looking like after it's all applied. I still have some on the back of my hand, so I ended up using about a pump. Why am I, I using, using such a, a luxe foundation, foundation for a Halloween, Halloween look? look? This foundation just makes me feel so pretty. It's like a light veil of foundation. It's not cakey at all and it looks like skin. And no, I'm not being paid to say any of this. I just love this foundation. Thank you so much, Lancome. I'm gonna add a touch of concealer under my eyes because those bags are insane. It's kind of sad because I feel like Halloween starts to lose that natural magic it had when we were children and you kind of have to create it for yourself, which is why I do these makeup looks because I want to still feel in the Halloween spirit. I decorate the house and I watch Halloween movies. Are you guys Halloween people like that? Is that weird? Do you guys just chill and go with the vibe of Halloween and wait for it to pass? until Christmas. Like if I didn't do makeup for a living, I feel like I would feel so out of touch with Halloween because doing the makeup is what keeps me in the spirit. So I'm just gonna powder really quick using our Huda Beauty powder. And yes, in an ideal world, I would go out on Halloween day and trick or treat, but why can't I do that now? Because I'm a 25 year old man and that would be a lawsuit. I'm gonna be honest, if I did have children, I don't even know if I would let them go trick or treating unless it was heavily supervised because there are tons of crazy people out there these days. Now that you guys heard me rant and we are successfully powdered, let's move on to the star of the show, the face paint. For reference, this is what I accomplished last year and we are gonna do that same exact thing step by step. 
To simplify this a bit for you guys, I'm going to give you a roadmap and it's really three major steps. First, we're going to use black to create a bit of an outline. Second, we're going to add the color and lastly, some highlights. I'm going to sound like a broken record by the end of this video, but I promise you guys, you can achieve an amazing Halloween look with just some time and patience. This palette is going to be your best friend. It's from You Can Be Cosmetics. It's on Amazon and it's really, really affordable. As you can see, it comes with a variety of colors. So just beyond this video and this look itself, you can do so much with this palette. For this first part, we're solely going to be using the black paint and I'm going to work from the top of my head down. These are the two brushes I'm going to be using. One is flat and wide and the other is more thin and tapered. The reason why I'm using craft store paint brushes like this is because you really don't want to damage your nice brushes for a Halloween makeup look like this. And in all honesty, I don't think a Halloween look like this necessitates the need for really like amazing brushes. Quick intermission from Justin as I edit. Who the f says necessitates? That's what I get for trying to sound like eloquent while I do this tutorial. Bits just say it's not necessary. Done. Start off by finding the center of your face and that's where we're gonna draw our first line. So we're just gonna start here and drag lightly as we get closer to our nose, ease up on the pressure of your brush. And here's a general tip for you guys. The more pressure you put on your brush, the thicker that your line will be. So as you come down closer to your nose, if you ease up on the pressure, you'll achieve a thinner, more tapered line. Now that we have our center line, it's gonna be a great point of reference. We're gonna create two more lines on either side that are following the perimeter of our face. And trust me when I say this does not have to be perfect because this look, like I said earlier, is very grungy and we're still gonna add eyeshadows and stuff like that after. And voila, now we're gonna create one more line at these intersections on either side so that's gonna to come towards our eyebrow. And you may be asking yourself, what am I doing? What is going on here? And this is the part of the makeup look that is actually gonna be reminiscent of the pumpkin. You'll see when we add the orange pumpkins. Didn't I tell you guys this was easy? We're literally just creating lines on our forehead. We're gonna move on to the eyes and this is really simple. We're just gonna create a triangle on the top lid and on the bottom. What I like to do is to look straight in a mirror and then make a dot on the top and bottom and that'll be a good point of reference to where to create the tip of your triangle. Try your best to make it symmetrical but you're not gonna die if it isn't. <laughs> I like to use my eyes as the base of the triangle so from that point that I drew I'm just gonna drag it towards the outer corner of my eye just like so you're gonna do that same thing from the inner corner to your dot and there you go you have your first triangle now it's just a matter of finishing your other triangles and filling it in and it's not gonna take that long honestly just slap on the paint don't be afraid did you guys ever have like this phase in your childhood where you thought that going out and trick-or-treating was just so uncool because I specifically remember this one year where I was just giving my mom a hard time bless her soul Essentially, all the neighborhood moms wanted their kids to get dressed up, take photos, and go trick-or-treating together, and I was just not having it, but my mom was like, You are gonna go with these kids. You're just gonna go, you're gonna have fun. She drove to a Walmart and got these werewolf gloves, and she's like, put this on, and she got like this flimsy mask and said, you're a werewolf. I remember I was just wearing jeans and a t-shirt and these gloves. I look so stupid, but looking back on it, my mom just wanted me to have like a good Halloween memory. If you guys watch the Japan vlogs, I was just in Japan visiting my mom, and she told me she watches all my videos, and one tip she had for me was she was like, you just talk way too fast. And I was like, mom, that's because English is your second language and you think I'm going fast, but I promise you I'm not talking that fast. So I guess you guys should just let me know, am I talking way too fast? Because if I am, I will try my best to slow it down. Once you successfully look like a drugged up raccoon, you are now gonna move on to the nose. The nose has got to be the easiest part of this entire look. You're basically just gonna create this curved, elongated isosceles triangle on your nose. At least I hope isosceles triangle is the correct terminology, otherwise my geometry teacher failed me. Bonus points if you get that tip of your triangle to taper and kind of meet in the middle with that line that you created in the beginning. Let's take another trip down memory lane because I'm already feeling nostalgic. And if I think about my favorite Halloween costume that I've ever done, I think it was back when I was like five or six and I was cycling from X-Men. Looking back at my childhood costume choices, they're kind of funny because as a little gay boy, you'd think I would be a princess, but I was running around as Cyclops from X-Men and a Power Ranger. Like, what? So if I cover the lower part of my face, are you guys starting to see the vision? This is really giving pumpkin, and now we're gonna get into the skull details. For this part, we're gonna create these lines to outline our jaw. So before we do that, it's good to get something and figure out where the hollow of your cheek is because that's the empty space that you're gonna wanna ignore. And now I'm gonna be switching to my flat brush instead of the pointed one. I like to find my cheekbone and go a little bit lower than that to start and now I'm gonna just create this curvy line from here all the way towards my ear just like that. And if we're following our trick from earlier when you press to find the hollow of your cheek the curved line that we just created should be above that. Now we're just gonna connect where that line left off and follow our jawline just like so leaving that empty space here like we did earlier. Are you guys following along? I hope I still have your attention. There's one more line to construct the whole jaw area. We're gonna start from our chin, 
and just follow this curved line around our chin and then upward towards that line that we created earlier, just like so. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of description that was. That was absolute gibberish. Essentially what we're trying to do is to make our face look skinnier and more hollow, which is what a skeleton is. Giving skinny legend. I guess you can kind of consider it like contouring, but not really. <laughs> the next part I'm not gonna lie to you is a bit frustrating is trying to match that on the other side. And I always forget to do this. Do your least dominant side first because then it's easier to kind of mirror that with your more dominant side. I'm trying to come up with a description for the shape on our cheek to give you guys a better guide. And the best thing I can come up with is like an egg with one side open. I think that's a terrible description. <laughs> better yet, maybe it's giving like a tulip that hasn't bloomed yet. What do you guys think? Just a little finishing touch right here. From the tip of your tulip shape on your jaw, I like to extend and drag that line upward towards my ear. This just helps the look feel more a part of your face. So especially when you're turning at different angles, whether you're meeting people at a party or whatever, you're not gonna just have like this harsh line that stops at the perimeter of your face. I'm well aware of the fact that doing skull makeup for Halloween is not the most original idea, especially cause so many people do it every year. However, my main goal behind this video is to help debunk Halloween makeup and make it more accessible to everyday people. Because not everyone is a makeup artist and not everyone can freehand it on the spot an hour before an event. Like it takes practice. So this will give you guys a few weeks to hopefully get it down before Halloween. The last part to outline is the mouth and the teeth. For this part of the makeup, you have two options. The first time I did this look, I used a gel eyeliner around the mouth, especially because it's a part of your face that moves quite a bit and you don't want it to crack or smudge. However, it's totally within the realm of reason to use a grease paint just like this, like we've been using for the rest of our face on your mouth. Granted, you should set it with a little bit of black eyeshadow just to make sure that it generally holds its shape, but if you're not too worried or particular about it smudging, then go right ahead and use this just like we did for the rest of our face. For the sake of today's video, I'm just gonna use the grease paint because I didn't use it last time and I'm kind of curious to see how it holds up. And I'm gonna switch back to the first brush because the teeth require a little bit more fine detail. The way I like to do it is to start from the edge of my mouth and drag that line into the hollow of our cheek, but don't go to this line right here. You want to leave a little bit of space there because you will be adding color and you don't want things to get all splotchy. And then we're gonna do the same with the other side. The amount of teeth that you include on the mouth region is not a set standard. It's gonna be totally up to you and it's gonna depend on three major things. One, do you have the time and patience to include 50 teeth? Two, is your hand shaky and can you even get through all the teeth? And three, as you're drawing the teeth, is your hand smudging any of the teeth and does that frustrate you? So move forward with caution and I'm gonna try to do my best to include enough teeth to show that like we're a scully pumpkin. For the teeth, it's a simple triangle. You just draw it and fill it just kind of like we did with the eyes. The way I approach this is that I create this imaginary line that goes down the center of my face and I'm just gonna keep creating triangles on either side of that line. And I just use that same trick and oscillate back and forth so I'll make a tooth on this side and then I'll create that same mirror image on that side just to ensure that I have the same amount of teeth on either side of my face. And in the same way that you're mirroring left and right for the teeth, do the same for the top and bottom. Use the top teeth that you created as a guideline on how to mirror it on your bottom lip. This is easily the most tedious and time consuming part of the entire look so be sure to take a break otherwise you will get a hand cramp. If the teeth are not perfect and smudge a little bit, I personally think it adds a little bit to that horror element aspect. The best Halloween looks will always be the ones where you can see how much love and attention have been put in them so if there's a smudge here or there that just shows how hard you worked on it because honestly who cares trust me if you don't smudge it here you're gonna end up smudging it at the halloween horror nights when you're screaming running around all night makeup is for fun and if anyone tells you otherwise they are chronically online and quite frankly yes. i forgot to mention this but the teeth at the front of your face should be smaller and the ones on your cheek should be bigger it just helps give that bit of dimension and realism to the whole entire look not gonna lie to you the pigment and dry down time of the gel liner is obviously light years ahead of this black paint but if you're in need of this effect in a pinch this will still do the trick so don't knock it until you try it after a solid solid hour of painting this outline, we are finally done with it, and now we can move on to the fun part, adding the color and highlights. To add color to our face, I'm going to be using the oranges from the Beauty Bay Fiery 2.0 palette. I love this thing, and it also comes with the black, so that'll help us set some regions that also move and crease a lot. I'm grabbing some black shadow on a packing brush, and I'm going to set my eyelids first because that is the most prone to movement because obviously you blink throughout the entire day and move your eyes so much. When you bust out the eyeshadows, that's my favorite part of any look because that's where you can really see your hard work kind of 
come to life where you add dimension and all the color and stuff. With different size brushes, you're free to set the entire outline that you did if you really want to, but to save time, I'm gonna just mainly focus on the nose from here and like the center part and the bigger teeth on my face. Be wary of fallout, take your time. You don't wanna disturb any of the outline and the shape, otherwise you'll have to go back in with the paint and fix it. As I said that I messed up one of the teeth, so now I gotta make it a little bit larger to cover up my mistake. Just like we did with the outline, when it comes to the orange, I'm gonna start from the top and work our way down. I'm essentially using the orange to blend on either side of every single line. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but trust me, it's all gonna be worth it in the end. My main goal is to first pack this color on, and this is in the shade Spice, and then I'll blend out with a lighter orange afterwards. Okay, scenario time. Let's say you're in a time crunch. If you take the time to blend every single line, trust me, you're gonna be there in that chair for three plus hours. Instead, just slap that color on and blend later because worst case scenario, you're running out of time. You'd rather have the orange and the effect of the look done rather than perfectly blended lines. At the end of the day, it's Halloween, not the Met Gala people. I don't know if I'm gassing myself up to feel better, but the orange is really bringing it to life. Like the lines were just the lines, but now with the orange, I'm feeling the pumpkin spooky vibes. When it comes to the teeth, I just leave that for last because it takes a much smaller brush to make sure you get into those lines and you're not smudging and making a muddy mess of anything. And oddly enough, this is extremely therapeutic beauty because regardless of what look we're trying to achieve, the feeling of a soft brush on your face cannot be beaten. Since we have some time on our hands, here's some more Halloween rants. In hindsight, I really regret not going out on Halloween more in undergrad because I think I only went out like one or two Halloweens in my entire four years. And actually, I can't remember if it was junior or senior year, I did a Lady Gaga makeup, I'm gonna insert it right here. It was so terrible, the white paint was like peeling off and I looked crazy. My first two Halloweens in college, it was so sad, I just spent it studying. How oh, lame, lame is, is that? that? If I give it some thought and logic, the reason why I think I skipped out on Halloween the first two years is because I was still in the closet and I really wanted to do makeup, but I didn't want to be judged. So I thought if I can't do makeup, I'd rather just not go out for Halloween, which ugh, what a wasted opportunity. Just in the closet gay thing. So what if I got judged? I know for a fact I got judged for that terrible, horrendous art pop makeup because I used a bed sheet for the costume, a bed sheet. Justin's makeup lesson of the day. Who cares what you do? It's makeup. It washes off. Wear what you want to wear because you're going to miss out on opportunities like that and then you're going to be sad about it when you think about it when you're older. For the teeth, I'm going to be using this smaller fluffy brush. Just take your time, get in between each of those teeth and give a soft blend. It's kind of like flossing. All of the burnt orange is applied and it looks amazing. And like I said earlier, like if you stopped here, who would be mad? This looks insane. If you went out like this to a Halloween party or on Halloween day, I'm sure people would be like, wow, I love your makeup. And that's the best compliment. That doesn't mean a little bit of blending and taking some more time won't make it even better. So let's get into some blending. The reason why doing a look like this is so fun is because obviously the payoff is incredible, but also blending is not required, but encouraged. So do with that what you will. If you guys do end up attempting this look, I would love to see it, but also be sure to tag Makeup by Sable X because I'm sure she would die over any recreations. Oof, we've been at it for two hours and my stomach is beginning to grumble. As we're nearing the end of this look and I continue to blend, I'm realizing that honestly, if you over blend, it would take away from the overall effect of this look. So be very cautious with how much you blend and how much color you add. All of the orange is applied and we're nearing the end and it makes me a little sad, but this part is one step that you absolutely cannot skip. I don't believe the original creator did this, but I thought it added a little bit of ink to the look, so you guys give me your thoughts in the comments. This is just some white liquid liner. You could use any. This is from Made by Mitchell Graph Ink in the shade Milk. There's no real rhyme or reason to this, and you can add as little or as much as you want. I'm just picking points all across my face and I'm adding a little bit of white liner along the black outline. I personally think it helps the details of the look pop a bit more and add a bit more dimension, but obviously it's all up to you, but I think it's something that you can skip. This is Halloween, this is Halloween, this is Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. And this is the final pumpkin skull look all complete. <laughs> After watching that, I don't know if you guys still believe me or not when I said that it was easier than it looks, but I really hope you guys give it a try because it's a fun makeup look and if anything, it's going out of your comfort zone and trying something new for Halloween. And also, if you guys didn't already check it out, my three-part vlog series for my trip to Japan with my boyfriend is up on the channel and I hope you guys like it. That trip was super fun and memorable and I had a lot of fun filming and editing the vlog, so I hope you guys really like it. However, it is great to be back in the studio making makeup content again, but who knows, maybe I'll travel somewhere and make some more travel vlogs. With that being said, thank you Thank you guys so much for watching today's pumpkin skull makeup tutorial. I hope you guys learned a little something and you're gonna try it out for yourself. And be sure to like this video and subscribe because you're not gonna wanna miss any videos from this channel. We're gonna be putting out a lot of makeup content and experimental stuff. I'm really excited. But until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy Halloween and bye everyone.